Hello. All right, if you guys clicked on this video, then you're probably thinking of upgrading to the newish or most recently released M4 MacBook Air, whether for school or just for personal use. And let me just give you guys the answer straight away. If you have an M2 or M3 MacBook Air, there's no need to upgrade. But if you have the M1 MacBook Air of that old design or an even older MacBook, or you might just be on Windows right now considering the switch, let me tell you that it's absolutely worth it on so many levels, specifically the phenomenal battery life, insane performance for that money, of the M4 chip and the beautiful top of the line hardware, which I'll explain throughout this video by using my own upgrade journey from the M1 MacBook Air to story tell to you guys. Now, for the backstory, I'd initially bought the M1 MacBook Air all the way back when I started engineering in university and when I started this tech channel just as a temporary laptop as I didn't have that much money at the time, which I still don't by the way, but I abused that thing to the maximum building up this channel and spending very, very long days at school with the base model M1 chip struggling through my demanding 4K editing which honestly wasted so much of my time waiting for that rolling ball of death, the relentless freezing and lagging of the laptop, the constant memory maxed out messages, the horrible thermal throttling which literally drove me to shove that thing in a fridge during video exports, the laptop was so dinged up and dented, and the USB-C ports were practically working only half the time as I plugged and unplugged chargers and external SSDs for so long. Worst of all was the horrible battery degradation I'd experienced using the laptop so much every day and charging it so much in which let me actually tell you the tipping point which led me to impulsively buy the M4 MacBook Air. All right, so I was visiting my dad at the hospital in Toronto a couple months ago and I had to stay there the entire day until my mom came back from work. So naturally, I plan to get a lot of work done on my laptop. An hour later, I quickly realized that I actually forgot my big power bank at home, and of course, I had no charger on me as well, and the room didn't have any usable outlets either, so my M1 MacBook Air already lost half its battery life within the first hour of usage, which I angrily posted on my story. This being my final straw, and with everyone telling me yes in response to my Instagram story, I decided to take a detour when I later hopped into my car, drove straight to a mall that was on my way home, and the rest is history. Later that night. Yo, let's go. I finally bought the M4, M4, come on, M4 MacBook Air, which I want to unbox this because uh, I just got home and I was going to go to bed after showering, but you know, I just couldn't bear the thought of waiting till tomorrow. So let's do this together. All right, to the back, we have some big fat pull tabs. So let's get that out. That's one right there. Boom. And the second one. Oh my God. All right. And finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, the MacBook reveal. Shoo! Oh, wow, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, the Apple logo is big. All right, let's take this out. Oh my God, this, oh my God. It is so unreal to like actually hold this in my studio compared to in the Apple store. But let's peel this little paper thing open. Oh my God. Beautiful. I ripped it. Okay, whatever. Sky blue, obviously, my favorite color. Wow. And ta-da. Boom. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh my God. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, let's set this to the side, right over here. And then in here we got matching sky blue cable. Let's go, magnetic too, not USB-C. And then over here, we also got the brick. We got a bunch of Apple stuff, Apple papers and stuff like that. Do they have stickers, sky blue stickers? I hope so. Uh, no stickers, what? What happened? No stickers, okay, whatever. And we also got the brick. Oh, this is a lot smaller than the old brick they used to give. And two USB-C ports, so that's cool. Folding prongs as well. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, apologies for the interruption, but let's have a quick word about the sponsor of this video, Clean My Mac, which you may or may not have heard of before, but it's something you guys should really, really check out if you own a MacBook or just got one. It's a tool that does literally what the name says, clean your Mac, but on the inside. And especially for us people who can't afford to upgrade our internal storage, it fills up really quickly just like my SSDs and SD cards as a student and a content creator. And if you're like me with very messy and disorganized files all over the place, it was trust me, it's gotten really bad before. It's just super hard to find out what's taking up so much space, not to mention lots of hidden files and junk that are just lurking around in your system. You really don't wanna be in a situation where you're out of storage everywhere 
which is just so frustrating. So to make sure you're maximizing your laptop space, all you need to do is just run a smart care scan, which utilizes all the functions like cleanup to clean the system cache and development junk, moon law protection to check for any nasty viruses, any maintenance tasks to speed up performance, check for any unused applications or old files, and declutter your laptop for you, which is really, really cool. And after the scan is complete, you get an overview of everything it found in which you can then click run for the app to do everything that is needed for you just like this. Doing this every so often will make sure that you're not bogging your system down with old unused files or any hidden junk. And by the way, if you wanted a cool feature, Space Lens can actually show you and visualize in bubbles how your storage is split between all your folders of how big they are. But not only can Clean My Mac clean up your laptop, but even Cloud Storage with the latest feature, Cloud Cleanup, which just came out recently. Right now, it can connect to three cloud services, iCloud, OneDrive, and most importantly for me, Google Drive. But yeah, let me actually do a live demo of this new feature so we can discover it together. Well, first of all, look at how much storage I'm actually using in my Google Drive. That's insane. Not to mention, I'm paying like $27 a month right now, which is a lot. And pretty soon, I'm probably gonna have to pay for the five or 10 terabytes. So that is not fun at all. But yeah, enough talk, let's just start the scan. Alrighty, let's click on the scan button over here and let it do its magic and scan my, wow, that was, wow. Okay, that was really fast. Now we can select review all files and boom. Oh, you get to see all the space bubbles. So over here I can see, ah, I don't really need that video anymore, actually, because that was a random video. So I can select that and then choose to review and remove. So let's click that. Boom. And there we go. Oh, you actually get a final confirmation. So if we click remove, got it. Nice. So, as you can see, all the functions in the app are super duper cool and I've been happily watching Clean My Mac evolve over the past few years. So yeah, I definitely recommend trying this app out for a new or old MacBook. And if you do want to do so, you can check out my link down below in the description and pinned comments. And also make sure to use my discount code Gadgetsu for 20% off. But yeah, thank you so much Clean My Mac for sponsoring this video and let's get back to the review. I've made it to Starbucks and it's gonna be the first time I'm taking the M4 MacBook Air outside. So yeah, it's charged fully up to 100%. So we're gonna see how the battery life goes with a couple hours of doing homework, replying to emails and doing some light tasks. And then I'm also gonna edit a couple of videos to see how the editing performance is like. So yeah, I'm super duper excited. Let's go in and see how this laptop performs. First test run with the M4 Mac complete and oh my god, this is already worth the thousand dollars that I traded up for because the battery life, holy crap, I I can't believe it. In two hours, I only dropped what, like 15%? That's crazy because my M1 MacBook Air with the service needed battery would have pretty much already died or been like at like 25% or something like that. So this already incredible and also, I tested a little bit of video editing in DaVinci with my 4K files from my Sony mirrorless camera mixed in with some iPhone log footage and some DJI Pocket 3 log footage and playback was absolutely smooth. Obviously, this was not a couple hours into the edit, so I don't know about thermal throttling, but so far, so good because just the playback alone, oh my God, not it being like lagging or chopping, game changing, game changing. This laptop, ooh, 
I'm so glad. And I'm gonna keep using it this week and then I'll get back in the studio and get back to you guys with my first impressions. And yeah, I totally remember to get back to the studio and do my first impressions, but now that I've been living with the M4 MacBook Air as my main laptop for the past five months now, I have a much better perspective on all this laptop has to offer now, so that's a win, I guess. But anyways, as you can see from that vlog section, the battery is literally one of the biggest reasons why I upgraded as being able to bring a laptop worry-free outside for the whole day is just such a quality of life improvement, knowing that you're not bound to a charger or power bank and can do as much product Activity work away from home as possible. And yes, a battery swap would have been like 80% cheaper and saved me a lot of money as my laptop battery health was so bad that it said it needed some service in the settings. But I think performance with the M4 chip was also a very big and necessary jump, at least in my use case scenario, from the M1 chip, which is still good, don't get me wrong, as it was a champ for even surviving this long and getting me to this point in my content creation journey, in which if you aren't using it so demandingly like I am, or you don't find any struggles with it, I can still wholeheartedly say that that it's an amazing laptop chip that truly revolutionized the laptop industry. But ultimately, content creation was becoming more and more of my focus, so I really needed that chipset upgrade with the huge performance gains over the M1. So I ended up getting the same laptop spec as my old laptop with 16 gigs of RAM, which thankfully is now a default, and upgraded the storage to 512 gigs, which should be the default. That's not enough for what I need, honestly, but I can't afford the insane premiums that Apple charges for RAM and SSD upgrades. So for now, this will be another temporary fix to my laptop problems until I can save enough money for that maxed out 14 inch MacBook Pro like I've always dreamed of. But at the same time, I already recently got a pretty well specced out gaming PC for editing at home through some sponsors. So that's settled. Outside of performance though, there are a lot of nice upgrades in terms of the hardware from the M1 MacBook Air, which you can definitely notice. And even more so if you're coming from an older Mac or some ancient Windows device. So first of all, this sky blue is honestly gorgeous despite it being so unsaturated, and especially when it catches the light just right, you really get to see that beautiful blue hue, which is my favorite color as well, so maybe I'm biased. This MacBook going towards a flat design from the previous wedge design also just makes the laptop feel more modern and up to date as all the phones nowadays use a flat edge design, and it also does play some psychological trick on me where it reminds me of carrying a book or textbook in which it does make me feel like this is more of a tool for productivity. It's supposed to be around 50-ish grams lighter too, which I don't notice at all to be honest, but something that's really noticeable are the much thinner bezels on the display, which make the M1 MacBook Air look absolutely ancient with those chunky square bezels. The curved corners just look so much more aesthetically pleasing, and I absolutely love how the notch gives you a lot more usable space instead of a fat bezel on top by keeping the menu bar there, and overall, it just makes the display feel so much bigger for productivity work, especially of stuff like split screen tabs. The screen is also upgraded too from the old 400 nits to 500 nits, which I definitely notice a lot as someone who loves working at cafes or just working on the bus home, so another big upgrade in that area. And just getting back to that notch real quick, I've done a couple of meetings and calls of this MacBook already, and I can definitely notice the much sharper image the 1080p webcam provides over the old one, and I was actually genuinely shocked the first time I got to use it. All right, some more good stuff I notice a lot is the much improved charging speed of around 70 watts, which recharges the laptop so much faster than my M1 MacBook Air, which I always get on average like 45 watts for my wall outlet or power banks. And having that MagSafe port to use for charging frees up an extra USB-C port, which is so useful sometimes, but I honestly just don't take my MagSafe cable outside because I forget it a lot, and I'd rather just Apple give us a third USB-C port on the right side. And speaking of the right side of the laptop, I'm so glad that Apple put a much better headphone jack with support for high impedance headphones because that means I can actually run my open back headphones at an actually usable volume unlike before, although this isn't a very hard headphone to run to begin with. And the speakers on this thing also sound so, so, so much better and louder than my M1 MacBook Air as well as it does have a new four speaker sound system versus the old stereo one, so thumbs up for that. And the last one I have is that the function row is now using full size keycaps, which are now easier to press, but did take me a little bit of time to get used to since the keyboard is now pushed down a little, which did mess with my muscle memory at the start. But yeah, those are all the major improvements I've noticed using the M4 MacBook Air these past few months after upgrading from my M1 MacBook Air. And I know this video has no structure and it's just a messy rambling of all my thoughts, but the point is, 
if you can afford it, and if you think it's time for a laptop upgrade from your old ancient device, I think the M4 MacBook Air is just by far the best laptop to get as a student or for anyone that does productivity work without needing Windows apps. And I honestly wish I listened to everyone's advice and upgraded much sooner, mainly for the battery improvements and the amount of power the M4 chip has enabled me to do my work more smoothly and efficiently. But yeah, hopefully this gave you guys a good idea of whether or not it's worth it for yourself to upgrade your old laptop. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below for me to answer and I'll try my best to get back to you guys. And if you're still here, thank you so, so, so much for watching and make sure to leave a sunglasses emoji down below so I know you're a real one. And sorry for my noise, I'm still recovering from being sick the past few days. Also, big, big shout out to Clean My Mac for sponsoring this review and making this video possible. So check out the links down below once again. And as always, make sure to smash the like and subscribe button and check out my other awesome content in which there are so many phone content coming out. And on that note, have a great one and I'll see you guys in the next one.